So uh, I'm just going to go over uh, the, some of the types of backups that Veeam does. You can do an image level, uh, the whole VM, for example, whole NAS device, uh, volume level partition, and you can restore a disk or a partition. Um, nothing real fancy about that. File level restores, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's it's that's all it's all really well known stuff. The 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 key piece is versioning, and that's always the case with backups because the last the the most current backup isn't necessarily what you need, especially if you get hit with some kind of ransomware encryption. You know, you got to dig a little deeper and go back a little bit for a lot of stuff. But the beauty of that is, is you can find you know, gee, it started on three days ago, you can grab the majority of your data from then. And as things get encrypted, you can go, you know, you can go back a little further and find your files that you need that haven't yet been encrypted and, and unencrypt them and re restore them. So it's, uh, it works really well. We've, we've done a few. I have a question. Had, yeah, go ahead. On those backups, um, I like the versioning. Uh, can they be set up so they're read only so they can't be encrypted? Yes, they can. That's, uh, that's, that's part of the new piece in version 11. Okay. Uh, immutable, uh, immutable restore points is, is now a thing. In oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, they had to, I mean, you, you can't, you can't do it without and, uh, and part of that is uh, part of the, the big protection picture is, is having local backups and and cloud backups where it's separated you're kind of air gapped then right so. one of uh i have a customer who's kind of looking at it from a security perspective as well and and what they're doing is so they're doing the local right backup and then they're they're creating a separate vlan they're vlanning it off so it's segregated so it's only a backup network segregated and and only opening the firewall so it's firewalled off only opening it up for that known ip for the backup box or the local backup mm -hmm. and then and then they're using a tool uh like apgard putting apgard in the backup environment so that if something were to propagate into the backup environment apgard will stop it but you know if you're familiar with apgard one of the things that apgard has the capability of doing is like stopping everything in a production space that can bring them to their knees from a production perspective. But they're actually, like I said, moving that over into the backup network and having it there. So if something were to happen, AppGuard will stop it and it won't stop all the production. Kind of an inter interesting take on it. I thought that was a creative use of the various technologies, but uh, you know, Veeam being the, at the core of that as well. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on here. Um, it's, uh, it's more of the backup stuff, the software as a service stuff. Um, you know, we can restore individual files or individual emails, whole mailboxes. Uh, we had we had a customer that was looking for uh, particular words in emails. We were able to search that, parse that stuff out. You know, they had like. I don't remember how much data, 10,000 10, emails, over 10,000 emails that, that this thing was able to pick up out of all their environment that had this particular word or phrase in it that they were looking for. Um, and it took a while to do the search. The searches take a lot of time, um, hours for the searches in Office 365 backup stuff. But uh, it's a new product for them, and I'm sure they're, they continue well. to tweak it. I think even still today, um, you know, one of the things I ran into is that there's an assumption that um, Office 365 is just backed up, that your email right. is just backed up. And, and when the realization comes that it isn't, um, you know, uh, understanding the Veeam tool um, and that it's relatively inexpensive to do that, that uh, uh, Office 365 backup makes it almost, almost a no-brainer. Um, you know, I won't say a no-brainer, but almost a no-brainer um, to have that type of thing, either on your enterprise mailboxes or maybe there's there's key ones that you want to make sure that you're that you're keeping track of or whatever. So um, I think that that capability. Yeah, 
I just yeah. assumed Microsoft had that stuff archived in effect. No, yeah. they, they guarantee access to your data, but they don't guarantee your data is actually backed up. Which, yeah. You know, might not be there, but you can get it. Yeah, you it get it, but it might not be there. <laughs> well, and, and yeah. they do, they, there's times that you can get a restore. Um, um, it's not a backup, but you can get a mailbox restored, but it is a fight. It is a battle. To well, get and, and it's only, it's only for 30 days. If, you know, if you remove a mailbox or a mailbox gets deleted, you got 30 days after that 30 day point, there is no recovery. Not that I've ever been able to find. Well, that's why it, like, this is kind of nice because like I said, you can do the enterprise, but if you have certain, certain ones that are critical in nature, yeah, you can, you can do that too. And right. it, it's not, and like I said, the pricing is a cost prohibitive. It's, it's, it's pretty good actually. So it's cheap insurance, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Especially and, involved uh, in a situation where you have a entrepreneurial owner. <laughs> so right. it's nice to be able to provide that extra layer of restorability, let's say. And, and in today's world, you know, um, uh, people use their emails or their email system like a document archive. Uh, I yeah. guess, you know, recommendations, but that's the way they um, use it. So I know a lot of people that use their their uh, deleted items folder as, as document storage, too. And that just kills me every time. Hey, I that's a, that's a great idea. I think I'll start doing that. <laughs> well, if I don't empty that waste basket, you know, what they don't realize is those files can get overwritten is you, you mark them as you don't need them anymore. So, yeah, that's that gets ugly, too. So uh, part of the, the Veeam puzzle is, uh, is doing local and offsite uh, copies. We're going to, well, and I didn't even really put this in there at all, but uh, replication is an option too. It's not just backups. We can replicate things. Um, and and uh, as a matter of fact, what we did for one client, they moved, they wanted new hardware. We put the new hardware in the new building. We were able to get that in there before they moved. And then we replicated their environment from the old building to the new building. We did it once daily until the move. And then we got to the new building and everything's already there. Their whole environment was, you know, server environment was just right there waiting to be turned on. And, uh, and, and it, it worked just fabulously. And uh, uh, thank you, Paul, for thinking outside the box. He's not on the call, but he's like, well, can't we just replicate that stuff? And I'm like, yep. I don't know if we can or not. I, don't know, I suppose we can get As the guy who's done a few data center moves, et cetera, that was, that was bee's knees. That really it did yeah. work out exceptionally well. Because those uh, can be really painful. Well, and, and the thought of moving all that hardware over there just to get everything migrated, you know, get it on the new get it in the new system and then migrate it over and then take it out. This just eliminated all that extra work. Yeah. yeah ahead, Ken. Ken. How's it deal with the, the new hardware in the sense of drivers and things like that? Is it it's okay. uh, well for, for virtual machines, it doesn't, it's, it's you know, it's agnostic. It doesn't care mm -hmm. um, because that's all handled by the virtual operating system layer, but physical machines, it uh, you know, I, I don't know how it does it, but it does it. I've, I've done it on two Windows 10 laptops, uh, switching manufacturers and CPUs and amount of really? RAM, and it just works, man. You know, it's amazing. It, it's kind of impressive. Windows, Windows is pretty good. Windows 10 is pretty good about grabbing the correct drivers now. They, they've, for the most part, they've got that down. There's a few things out there that we struggle with yet, but, you know, uh, Windows 10 does a lot of that heavy lifting, but Veeam really sets it up well. Uh, mm -hmm. You can you can add drivers if you know ahead of time you're going to be moving. Okay. Uh, you can add those drivers into the backup, uh, and so that when it does when you do do the restore, it's it just reinstalls those drivers just like you did in the old days. You know when you were moving stuff around and setting up operating systems and you had to go in ahead of time and put the RAID drivers in and do all that stuff you know, as part of the back in, back in the day, though, sometimes that would get a little hinky and wouldn't want to boot. Right. Go you know, we've, holy uh, heck. we fought that fight. Yeah. It's ugly.